Okay, thank you. Well, thank you everyone for, for coming to the to the to this seminar of the Sarge Journal Club from Europe and Asia Oceania. Uh, it's my pleasure to, to, to join the, this, this series of seminars. Uh, I think it's a great initiative and, and I'm glad to, to, be, to be part of this because I think it's very important to, to be in contact with the community, uh, especially all of us doing different science and but using the same tools or similar tools and, and to communicate each other. I think it's, it's, a, it's, a, great, it's a great opportunity. So today I'm gonna I'm gonna be showing you some some of the results that I obtained uh, when I was doing my postdoc at Diamond Light Source. I'm probably as uh, Itoshi has said at the University of Autonoma Barcelona doing some other things related with more uh, environmental chemistry. But back there, so uh, I was doing uh, gas absorption studies on metal organic framework. So in particular, I'm gonna talk today about the flexibility behavior on one type of metal organic framework, which is called C8, and uh, the structural changes that uh, are going on when, when we are loading gas or we are doing some uh, transition through, through, uh, through this flexibility behavior, okay? So, so let's start from the beginning. So for those of you that you are, you are not familiar with MOFs, so metal organic frameworks, as they are called, so they are uh, porous structures. Uh, they are built, let me just put the laser. Yes, so, so uh, they are structures that are combining inorganic cornerstones with uh, organic linkers. So they are, these are kind of short hybrid structures and the good thing of them is that they, we, can, we can use the different uh, secondary building units and the organic linkers to get different structures. And the good thing is that they are, in most of them, they are highly porous crystalline materials. So that means that we can characterize them by using XRD. And, and they have really high surface area. So we are talking about 1,000 or 10,000 uh, meters per, per gram of material. This is huge. So we compare with the with the with cellites as prototypical uh, material. We can we can certainly um, see that they they, are, they have much more uh, surface area. Another another benefit of this, as I was mentioned before, is they they allow this modular synthesis in the sense that we can just choose the different the different combination the different organic linkers and the secondary building units. This uh, inorganic uh, cornerstones that are in the, in the uni, uh, joining these uh, organic linkers. And up to now, so it's, they are coming more and more. So we got up to more than 100,000 structures report. So this, this offers a huge versatility in terms of synthesis and, and structure design. Even more flexibility is, in, is can be obtained when, by post-synthesis functionalization for practical applications. For example, in this case, with this, this is a typical example that was reported by the group of uh, Seth Cohen. So by changing the functionality of the ligand, so we can just change the, the ligand or functionality of the ligand in a way to obtain um, new uh, metal organic frameworks with a target, uh, targeted or tailored application for tailored applications. This opens the possibility of getting a vast number of uh, MOVs and they can be tuned for different applications. And then indeed the, the, the number of applications that have been reported is growing day after day. So and it goes from heterogeneous catalysis to the use of, of MOVs in, as chemical sensors. They use them as, uh, as uh, nano carriers in biomedicine. There are some studies of photon conductivity and even the one that is going to be addressed, we are going to be addressing today is gas storage and separation. And one of, one of the things that is uh, becoming more um, beneficial today nowadays is that if we don't need to get and synthesize these materials for practical applications that they require vast amount or a large, large scale of materials, 
Um, some of them, some of these uh, material and metallurgy frameworks, are becoming available, commercially available. There are different companies. So uh, the one we we are going to be reporting today it was bought from uh, Sigma Aldrich. So it's, it's synthesized by BSA, and it's, uh, it's it's a good opportunity for 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 going uh, beyond the the synthesis and the characterization, and to do to to go into the practical applications. So in our case, so we are going to uh, focus on the, the family, chip, which is called uh, Solitic Emia Score Framework. And they are called like that because the, the link between the metal centers and the center of the, uh, of the midazolate is similar, this, this, this uh, angle is similar to the silicon oxygen silicon angle that is found in, in cellulites. So, Therefore, we got different by, com by combining the zinc nitrogen tetrahedron with the different imidazolate, methyl imidazolate, there are different organic ligands that can be, can, can be used. We can get structures that are similar to the typical zeolites that we can get, like sodalite zeolite, chabasite, or the, the, raw, the raw typology zeolite. One of the benefits of this material is that they have, uh, in terms of uh, when we compare with the traditional morphs so back in the days, so the, the, one of the, the difficulties of these uh, morphs is that they, they could not stand high temperatures, so they were not uh, chemically persistent. So these sieves, in particular, the one we are going to be uh, discussing today, which is the sieve 8, which is uh, this structure here, which is the solar light structure, is more resilient in terms of the temperature and chemical resistance, which is quite good. However, in contrast to, to the cell lights, so these steep uh, frameworks, they, they have um, not that rigid uh, structure, okay? And we will see, we will see how, this, uh, how this behaves in, in terms of the gas absorption and gas permeation. So some studies that were performed shown that when, when different uh, gas were from uh, through the through the porous structure from through the through the bed of this material, we could we could we could observe that when increasing the the kinetic diameter of the the gas the the, the gas molecule kinetic diameter size, there was not a sharp cutoff at what it was expected, which is kind of the the window size of this uh, of this pore aperture, which is the the pore aperture of the satellite cage. However, um, beyond the 3.4 Armstrong, which is this, this window where the, where the gas can go through the, through the structure, molecules as big as oxygen, nitrogen, and even, even uh, methane was passing through, okay? And this was, this was um, reported also that there was a, there was a, a, a structural um, transformation when we were dosing gas or we were applying pressure, that it was changing this pore window size. Okay, the pore window size, it was changing from 3.4 Armstrong to 4.1 Armstrong, allowing larger molecules to permeate through the porous structure and going through the, through the six member ring window. When monitoring the nitrogen absorption isotherm, it was shown or it was found that there was a double step function in the sense that, okay, that after, when we're reaching a certain pressure level of nitrogen in this particular case, this structure was reacting and more of nitrogen was permeating through was getting loaded into the structure. This is the, the, the effect that was investigated and, and by the models that we, we got from X-ray diffraction, the diff X-ray diffraction experiments, we could see that there were an opening, there was a, a, a swing of this uh, uh, organic linker allowing this pore window to open and uh, the gas coming through the porous structure, okay? So that's, that's very quite, quite interesting. So in terms of application, so we can by triggering by triggering the, the pressure, even 
mechanical pressure can trigger this or even electrically, we can increase the, the absorption capacity of my material. Okay. Okay, we were we were we were reading about this and we say we were thinking, okay, this is the, the picture from the X-ray diffraction, but we were interested in okay, in terms of the of the um thing nitrogen tetrahedron, so what is going on? So if this is changing the structure, uh changing the tetrahedron, if distorting this tetrahedron is changing the distances, is the is the X-ray diffraction picture accurate enough at the shortest distances. And we wanted to go beyond the, the, the model proposed by X-ray diffraction. Uh, we proposed to do some, or we did some X-ray diff, uh, absorption and spectroscopy experiments. So we did the experiments at the I-20 scanning beam line, diamond light, light source, which is um, a beam line with a with a four bonds monochromaton in the sense that it has two uh, double bonds monochromaton coupled in the way that we got a fixed sexy monochromator and we get a much higher spectral purity and and we we were using uh, uh, the the extra absorption spectrometer uh, in the station for this particular particular experiments. So the experiments were performed uh, in the isobar condition because uh, at that time we were not we were the, working on this and we were developing the, the instrumentation. Uh, we had this uh, link and cryo st stage, which which is uh, which is devoted to this. This is the similar one that it can be used for electron micros microscopy. And we're doing experiments in transmission mode using. Uh, Powder, powder uh, pelletized uh, in the form of 13 millimeter. We were we were fixing the the, the nitrogen nitrogen pressure and we were cooling down. One of the, one of the issues that we had in, is that uh, we could not uh, evacuate the chamber because the chamber is not meant to be evacuated. So we could not do this isofem from vacuum to to uh, to high pressure. But we did the the complementary. So we did the nitrogen isobar isobar measurements at the fixed 1.5 bar on nitrogen. And we were cooling down. So it's a different way of, of proving the thermodynamic uh, space. So we're cooling down from room temperature to liquid nitrogen. When having a look at the at the excess spectrum, we we found that the okay, so when we were cooling down, there was a decrease of the amplitude of the exit signal. Okay. The, the shape was not changing very much. And uh, in terms of the physical relation neighbor, this sync uh, tetrahedron um, unit, so we couldn't see much, much change. There was not at least a, a clear distortion of the sync nitrogen tetrahedron. But one thing that they kind of uh, surprised us is that when we found a, a contribution a high uh, R, so high as uh, 5.5 from around 6, which was changing when we're going from 100 to 80. So what does it mean? So in this in this particular case, so when we are cooling down, we are coming from the from the close uh, pore structure to the more open structure when we allow the gas to go in into the structure. So this would be an indication of this gate opening phenomenon occurring. Okay, we 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 model we model the data. So we we took our 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 cluster of atoms. So these these four branches of the of the zinc tetrahedron, including the 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 zinc methyl methyl. So I have, have not reproduced the the hydrogen atoms here. Oh, we're building the different the different the different paths and the different the different scattering contributions. So there was one uh, contribution that was quite strong in terms of the multiple scatter contribution, which is this focusing contribution here, which is at the distance of the this high R contribution. And one of the things that we we quickly learned is that we needed a lot of uh, scattering paths for being able to reproduce the 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 spectrum. This was uh, reported in similar structures by Petifer um, back in the back in the days when he was studying um, the the zinc um, 
the same uh, tetrahedral salt molecule uh, excess, excess. And then we say, okay, so we really need uh, all these multiple scattering paths, and we were including this um, by uh, using kind of uh, the modeling the distances using a kind of a expansion contraction of the isometric, uh, is isotropic expansion and contraction of the lattice or the distances because this is a cubic structure. We could do that, and in terms of the uh, the the world factors, so we can we can just um, model them kind of in scale scale it in terms of the of the distance from the from the from considering the the first neighbors maybe. So then we did the we did the fittings and we could, uh, we we got a, a rather good agreement. Uh, we did found some some uh, some expansion of the different distances as it was reported in X-ray diffraction. So it seems that the lattice is, is expanding when we are uh, when we are uh, going through this gate opening transition. But one other thing that we we didn't we didn't, we didn't found is that there is a, an expansion of the of the tetrahedron. So what is going on? So in X-ray diffraction, we got we got our 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 symmetry and our, our crystallographic structure, and there is a, 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 a expansion and construction of the lattice, and all the distances expand and contract in, in, in the same way. Here in in X, we can we can go beyond that constraint, and we can monitor the the, the distance as they are. Let's say. So in one of the main results in in, a, in, a, in our case is okay. So actually, is 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 it's not happening the same thing that is it being reported. So this expansion in the in the synthetrahedron is not being reported. Is not is not is not is not occurring. So you say, okay, can we can we get more more about this uh, this transition? Okay, let's have a look at the sains. We have a look at the sains and we say, okay, so there are some changes. We could see some changes when we are going through the transition, but the the resolution is not good enough. We say, okay, let's exploit the, 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 the high solution sense capabilities that we got at the beam line. So and we did the, the, the experiment using the, the X-ray emission spectrometer, uh, which is a, a one vertical round cycle geometry spectrometer available at the beam line. So okay, so we did the we did the we did the we did the experiment, so we, we improved the resolution and uh, well, this is these are more details about the about the, the the spectrometer available at the mainland. There are different uh, crystal analysis cut. So if you are uh, are interested, uh, I invite you to, to contact uh, Shushaku Hayama. He will be happy to to give you all the details and to to guide you through the through the best conditions to for your experiment. But coming us to coming back to our, our results. So okay, we have we have this this uh, standard resolution sense uh, changes which were um, rather small, and when we were sorry, and we were when we were doing an experiment using the, the X-ray emission spectrometer, we really improved the the, the resolution. Actually, we uh, draw a thick line over over the standard resolution sense. We will not be able to see any any changes, whereas when we compare with the with the high resolution of the room temperature room temperature uh, spectra, spectrum collected at the at, with the with the extra emission spectrometer, we really we can see that we resolve better the the structure at the at the rising edge. We can even resolve this this feature here and the, in in between the two main the two main features at the at the, the wild line. We can see that. Okay, so we got we got we got we are in, in, in a situation to to, to monitor this uh, FAD. Okay, so we were cooling down, we were cooling down, and when we reached the, the 80 Kelvin in the same uh, isobar conditions, we using the, the Lincoln cry stage, we could see that there was a change. So the the Y line was shifting towards lower energies. There was a, a smoothing of the first of, of this first feature of the Russian edge. And this feature in the in this in this uh, valley, it was it was not appearing anymore. So there was another another broader shift, and there was another feature appearing at high. Okay, so we do we do see these these changes, but okay. So what 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 do we go further? 
So in terms of exploring more conditions, so in terms of uh, temperature, in terms of uh, gas loading, so we move from this link and dry stage into the gas capillary itself, which allow us to control vacuum and then those, those different, those different uh, conditions. One of the things that is also in improving is that the, that the possibility of damaging the structure where we apply pressure to get the, the, the pellets. And this is important because when we want to monitor the, 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 the stains and we compare the powder in capillary with the different uh, pellet pressure and the different tonnage, we can see that, the, that this, there is a smear out of this structure. So there is kind of an amortization. It was earlier reported and we were about, uh, aware of that. So we kind of minimize the pressure to pelletize the, the the, the powder in the, in the, in the exit spectrum, but we were more, more um, confident on the, on the or we, were getting, we were getting more, more resolution and we were avoiding this smearing out when using powder capillary. Another, another warning for people uh, thinking of doing um, experiments with the metal organic frameworks is that they are very sensitive to, 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 the, to the exposure of X ray radiation. So they are radiation sensitive. So be aware of the radiation damage in your sample, because otherwise you may you may you may think that the, you you have uh, some changes, uh, especially when they are subtle. And the thing that you may have seen is the radiation damage. So monitor that. So we did that, and we we were thinking we were, we were seeing that the, that there was there was a, a, a change in the spectrum. So one of the things we did is just to move around the the capillary or the or the, or the pellet, and, uh, and, mo and monitor the radiation damage, and it was not it was not happening. Okay. So then using this capillary, capillary setup, so we did the, the experiments and we did the ice stem. So we were going from cool, from vacuum at the low temperature, and we were going all the way to passing through the to the gate opening transition to high pressure. And we did see the same changes. So we did see, we, we, we saw the same changes. So we, did, we saw the shift of the, of the B structure, the disappearance of the of the A structure, uh, and this is smoothing of the of the of the C of the C structure. Okay, that's good. So we, we do see the same thing with the capillary setup, even the, even with isotherm conditions, as we saw with the with the with the with the link and cry stage. We did this similar experiment uh, with the isobar conditions, a bit low a, a lower lower pressure, and we found exactly the same. Okay, so we can reach this, we can pass through this gate operating transition using either isotherm or isobar conditions. Perfectly fine. Good. So what do, we, what do we go forward? So one of the things we did is to do change calculations, but that will be after the post. So if you have any questions, I will be very happy to, to, to answer you. We can discuss about the, any, any question that you may have. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> Is there any questions from the audience? So thank you very much. Oh, can I ask? Yeah, yeah, of course. Uh, the, um, I'm, I am uh, Kyoto Sakura. So the, um, uh, I'm happy to ask you. Uh, the question is your uh, sample cell. So you make a disc, and the box side is liquid nitrogen, a tube. So do you, do you mean the, the, uh, the, the different yeah, cells? So one, one, one is one is the um, the link and prior stage. So we just mm -hmm. just have uh, to. To press the, the the powder into a pellet, mm -hmm. just to be able to be held by the clip. Mm -hmm. And we do the experiments. Yes. So the, on the top side, you have a thermocouple to measure the uh, temperature or heat it up. That is the heater. So the, you show the picture of the cell. Yes. Yes. There is always a thermocouple in contact thermal with, the, mm -hmm. with mm -hmm. the sample. Yes. Yes. It's always a thermocouple in contact with the sample. So. Um, I'm not sure if this. Let me just go back to the. To the yeah, yeah, yeah. Picture. Ah, yes, yeah. Uh, somewhere. Yes. The thermocouple is in, inside, so they're in mm -hmm. contact with the with mm -hmm. the with the sample, uh, monitoring the temperature. Yes. On so, the pellet case, what is the window? X-ray window, Captain? It's a Captain window. Yes, we had a Captain window in this in this particular case for the for the for the capillary mm. gas capillary, capillary. Mm. cell. Is mm -hmm. we use uh, quartz capillaries, which have uh, 10 micron wall thickness, and mm -hmm. they are kind of around two millimeter thick. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is yeah. mainly constrained by the beam size. So one of the things to bear in mind also is when yeah, you yeah, are yeah. going to to do experiments with a microfocus beam size, mm -hmm. microfocus beam, 
So mm -hmm. the radiation damage, especially if you go to undulated beam lines with really, really mm -hmm. high flux uh, um, photon density, so the, the radiation damage would be much higher. So mm -hmm. I, would, I would really, uh, I would rec strongly recommend people to, to monitor for the, the radiation damage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. <clears throat> thank you. Any um, maybe questions from Anna Zimina? Do you have questions? Yes, um, for okay. the same direction. Okay. Uh, this, um, I just wanted to ask again. So you put your sample, so powder in the capillary. Did you prepare the sample somehow before you, you did it? Uh, I don't know, press it, press it and, and so on. No, I mean the, the thing. One of the things you need to be careful with that is that when you when you are packing powder into a capillary, um, you should pack the powder in a way that this is uh, compact, but it's not clogged in the sense that they, because if you if you have powder which is too packed, the gas will not go through. You yeah. know what I mean? So you would you would. Yeah. You would you, and then one of the things we were doing is we just tapping tapping the capillaries. Uh, as we were loading the loading the powder, and there was some maximum amount of powder we were putting. So we were just doing some tests in terms of the gas, because one of the things that is you put you put too much material, uh, you would need to wait for the for all the material to because you, the, your 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 mouth is absorbing gas, but you need to you need to reach an equilibrium. So you need to monitor the the gas dose, and then to it's, 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 we were doing this in in a similar way. We, Similar way as we were doing the the BET experiment, so we were dosing gas and we were uh, waiting for the equilibrium to to be reached in terms of gas in terms of the gas absorption. And one of the things that you can you put the quartz wool at the end of the when you after you pack the, all the all the powder, you put a little bit of uh, glass wool just to wait the powder to fly away when you are uh, evacuating. Because one of the things sure. we did is when we were measuring this before measuring this um, samples at the beam line, we were um, activating them so we were we were um, heating them under vacuum just to make sure that there was not any solvent left in the in the pore structure or they were, they were ready to be they were fully empty that is one of the things that we all, all, always do with moss we always uh, uh, evacuate the the system before any gas loading solvent loading any any type of catalytic uh, measurement and um, how did you heat uh, your capillary so there are different ways of in the capillary. So in this particular case, we were doing uh, the activation X C two. So we had a kind of a small furnace, and we could we could make, put the, the kind of a cold heater. We can put the, the capillary mm -hmm. inside. Uh, we were activating the the we were heating up the this this uh, capillary. We had the we we were having the already the, the gas cell uh, capillary, gas capillary cell loaded, and we were doing this uh, in the lab. Let's say, and then then bringing bringing mm -hmm. the, the already activated sample into the beam line. I see. Okay. Uh, okay. Thank you. Now I get. It. Okay. Thank you. And uh, we have another questions from Lulira. The mic is not working. So <clears throat> the question is: Once you reach the condition of gate opening at eighty Kelvin, did you try to warm up the sample back to room temperature? Does the yes, we did. Is back to the same condition as room temperature, or it stays in the same condition as? At eighty Kelvin, so it's reversible or irreversible, maybe. Yes, yes, we we, we we did we did that, and then we we confirmed that they, we were reaching back the 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 initial state, so it was reversible, and but it has been already proven by the by the ISFM uh, measurement. So, so yeah, the the, the is is reversible. Okay, okay, unless so. you have burned your sample. <laughs> yeah. Sure. Okay, so yeah, could you uh, could you continue, Trick? Sure, definitely. Hitoshi, uh, quick question: Do you do you see the banner up here, or Sorry? is it clean? Uh, uh, is I'm, the... I'm getting here the banner, uh, uh, but the, I, I guess I hope you're not seeing the banner, the Zoom banner. Uh, you see the clean the clean presentation, right? It's just uh, questions only. Okay. Know. Put it in the, the bar out there on the top. Yeah, the, I got I got some something in the chat, but I don't want to open oh. the chat. Okay. 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 I'll continue. Okay. Cool. Thank you. 
today, I was, as I was saying before, so to get more information about the, what, is, what, is, what is going on, so we did the, the science calculations. Well, we use um, the, the multiple scattering, uh, well, we applied multiple scattering uh, methodology, which is uh, using the continuum code, which is implemented in MXAN. Uh, and this is similar to the, to the code what was uh, uh, later implemented in, in, or has been implemented in, in the, as the green function formalist in FDMNS. Okay, so uh, is the, it was developed by Rino Natoli. And I was taught how to, how to run the calculations using this software. That's why I, I'm using this continuum, continuum code software. So in brief, so it's a, it's a, we, we use the, the muffin team approximation. So in which you have, you have uh, your chain correlation potential for the different, for the different atoms and the constant potential in, in between, in between, the, in between the, the atoms. And you have an overlapping in the same correlation potential. The benefit of doing uh, sense calculations and compare it with high resolution uh, sense is that you can better uh, corroborate your calculations. What, what does it mean? So you have better resolution uh, experimental spectra. You, get, you, you need to have better uh, uh, agreement calculations. Better, better calculations to get a good agreement, right? So this is a, this is a particular example for the signal trade, okay? We, we were comparing the transmission and the, and the hard resolution sense and with the, with, the, with, the, with the calculation, okay? And, and here it's, it's clear, no? If, 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 if I would not have the, the, the possibility of comparing with the, with the hard resolutions, I would not be able probably to determine if my calculation is good enough, okay? So it's true that we high resolution sense is not uh, is not available everywhere and it's not uh, suitable for every for every for every experiment, but whenever possible and I think especially if you are gonna do uh, sense simulations, I think it's, it's a good way forward to to determine to get the best information from your system. Okay, another, another thing that, that I would like to mention that the, and is, 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 is known for people, uh, by people doing the uh, sense calculations and another time of, uh, of uh, cluster calculations. So it's just that you need to increase the, the, the cluster size and the reaching, uh, and the reaching com, com, convergence in terms of the, so we, we were increasing the, the number of atoms in the cluster where we were doing the calculation until the, we, the, 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 the calculated this spectrum, it was no longer changing. So when you were including more, more atoms and it was resembling the, the experimental spectrum, which is the, the one up here. So we started with the, with, the close, uh, with, the, with the close structure. And one thing to bear in mind here is that the contrary with the, with the like close packet structure that we are, we are used, uh, like uh, the previous example of the sync nitrate, the lattice, para, lattice, the lattice cell parameter in the case of MOVs is huge. So what does it mean? So in terms of the calculations, so in, we were, we were uh, going up to 10.4 or 10.5 answers, depending on this, the, the close of the open structure because of this uh, expansion. And, and the lattice, the lattice, the lattice uh, parameters in this particular case around 17 answer. So the, this, this small structure, they have huge uh, lattice cell parameters that, that uh, we need to bear in mind. So then we are not having this uh, periodic, we can, uh, with large cluster, cluster we don't have uh, uh, unit cells inside the cluster, okay? So this is more like a, um, warning and then this is important where you cut this uh, this cluster size okay so with cutting uh, molecules and things like that okay so because just to have a better better defined uh, potential another thing to bear in mind is, the, uh, is, is to, to do the the comparison of the different exchange for so potential in this case we are comparing the the, the different uh, real part of the of the, the two exchange risk potential well, the, Tirahara is real, but is the, compared with the real heavy loom is the uh, potential. Uh, we, we, we did 
we did see that the that the real data uh, was uh, giving a better um, rep reproducibility in terms of the in terms of the energy energy expansion of the lattice or the, the energy scale. One of the things that uh, it allows us to when we are doing the, the calculation, so we are building our our own structure, right? Uh, so then we don't need to constrain to the to the uh, structure that are reported in the literature. So in in, the, in this particular case, we did that. So we did we did build our own structure, starting from the from the closest structure because we wanted to monitor what was happening in terms of the of the swing in this liga. Okay, what was going on? So it was a distortion of the of the whole. The, it was a rotation of the whole of the whole liga. And it was it was a rotation only of the methyl group. And, and we were, um, the, we got this idea from from a previous paper from uh, David Farid Jimenez. So he was doing some some uh, FA diffraction, in situ FA diffraction experiment. He was getting some some of, a hint of this of this happening ha happening. So this is okay. So this is the this is the best the best uh, technique to to prove that because we are more sensitive to the to the arrangement of the atoms are this, which are closer to the to the sink. Okay. With the zinc, the zinc atom is this this pink atom here. Sorry about that. So then we we build different structures. We build different structures in terms of we were decoupling this this rotation. We were enable the the we were rotating in one case the whole the whole thing the methyl the methyl methyl group, and away from this rotation we were also rotating this methyl methyl uh, group, and we were building the different the different structures. Okay, rotating. Both, so in the in the sense that we were able to decouple this this motion. When we compare it with the with the with the spectra, especially at the at the very beginning, so we started from the cross structure, which which is uh, under measure under vacuum, and we were starting to load uh, nitrogen, and we were re reaching a, a low uh, nitrogen gas loading around twenty millibar. We could see that there was a uh, uh, this feature here was kind of Smear out was disappearing, and not much was happening in 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 the overall spectra. It was this this particular uh, feature that was changing, which is was is, um, we were able to see this because we were using hydrogen the same. Otherwise, it would be would be um, not not possible. Then we compare it with these three different cases. Okay, we the, the among all the structures that we model, so we have three cases that were were kind of similar. Okay. In one case, we have okay, we got the 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 the, the whole rotation of the the, the 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 of the methylmethyl group, the the whole ligand rotating, which is the the green one. Okay, it's reasonable, reasonable. And then we have uh, an intermediate rotation and a farther rotation of the methyl group. That kind of okay, so the the the, the methylmethyl is halfway rotated to, towards the op, the open open gate uh, condition. Which is at 20, at 20 degrees, at 21 degrees, and we kind of further uh, rotate the methyl group towards the open, open, open gate. And the, the last case, which is this, uh, this, uh, this uh, dark green. And the last case was okay. So we keep the the the, the methyl methyl group in the in the close condition, and we just bend a little bit the the meth the methyl group. In the way it's kind of opening, kind of slightly opening. And by comparing the different calculations with the with the changes uh, in, the, in the experimental spectrum, we kind of agree uh, that the that the uh, we we believe that the best condition uh, matching because it, it, it reproduces the the relative intensity of the of the of the, of the experimental spectrum and the and the disappearance of the of this feature here. Is this later case? So there is there is a kind of swing a little bit of this uh, kind of uh, bending of this methyl methyl group, which is kind of allowing or or, or kind of uh, in the sense in the sense of be more gate opening. And even though it's not it's not it's not opening the gate, it's not opening the port to to allow uh, the nitrogen uh, gas molecule to go in. It kind of changes a little bit the structure, kind of start to accommodate uh, the molecules. Okay, what happens when we do high gas loading? We go through this gate opening transition and we we open the gate. So 
In this particular case, so we have the experimental spectro, which is changing quite a lot. So we, the, the main feature of the wavelength is change, shifting towards uh, low energies. We disappear, the, this, uh, this uh, duration edge, the, the feature of the duration edge disappear. And we got this feature still not, uh, so not appear, still uh, flat. And there is an awarding of this feature, okay? By comparing with the different calculation that we had, so we we found that the, okay the best uh, agreement was found uh, with the when when the methyl group is fully open and and the methylimethyl group is, is 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 completely open as well. So when both are fully rotated, let's say, okay, to, in order to get the fully uh, the got the 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 pore open. However, we were not. Um, happy with that in the sense that okay there, there was some uh, discrepancies in terms of the of the relative high the intensity high so we say okay what, what we are missing so we are missing so we got the structure we got everything what will happen if, what will happen if we include the nitrogen molecules and this is what, what we did so we include we include the nitrogen molecules which are absorbed in the in the pore structure which are closer to the zinc uh, atom which are the, the ones that are located Inside the square or uh, open, open uh, the, square, the square square window, square, the, the pore the square pore window located in the middle. And when we included these this nitrogen molecules in the calculations, we found that we were reproducing much better the the, the, the experimental spectra. So we we had better the, this uh, relative intensity. So we say okay. So then. When we include the nitrogen, this is this is this is this is important. So okay, we, this is kind of that's kind of surprising because in most of the calculations we don't consider this because it's kind of okay the nitrogen uh, are not that well uh, ordered, and it's only in this particular case when we kind of reach some uh, saturation when they are located in a really uh, concrete position, which is in in the in the in the middle of the or around the middle of the this square pole window. And that kind of uh, strongly located there, okay, and they are close enough to the to the zinc atom to to be to be seen, okay. So this is this is one of the things that we found that we were quite 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 intriguing by that. So I guess okay, we say well, what happened with we, when we do with, with other okay. One thing we did is just okay, come back to our to our to our fittings, excess fittings, and we include the nitrogen molecules, and we we improve a little bit the the the, the fitting, even though the, the model is a little bit uh, simple for the excess fitting because it's, it's kind of uh, starting from the from the diffraction, we are not allowing because this, the multiple scattering contribution here in this in this second third con uh, shell contribution is, is is quite quite huge, so we cannot we cannot allow all the all the parameters to, to move freely because otherwise it would be kind of kind of a mess. So when we include in the, the nitrogen molecules, we were improving the the, the fitting, so okay, so it's kind of makes makes sense. So, but what happens when we when we do the we expand this this study to, to all the gases, so oxygen, uh, CO two, so we, we see that there is uh, this double step, which is uh, which, which is uh, indication of the this gate opening phenomenon in the oxygen, but there is none in the CO two. When we do the we did the experiment, so we found that similar case for uh, as for nitrogen for oxygen, we did we did see these uh, similar spectral changes, but we didn't see anything for for CO two at, at the at the at the kind of uh, pressure that we were we were reaching and the temperature. So okay, so we couldn't see. So we were doing uh, this for different for different gases. And uh, we could see that there's an uh, same similar behavior uh, for the oxygen, but not, not for the CO2. When we look at the at the where the oxygen molecules and the nitrogen molecules are located, when different different words, uh, when they have been doing uh, grand canonical Monte Carlo simulations uh, combined with the X-ray diffraction um, experiments, they usually locate the nitrogens. In a very particular symmetry locations in the in the in the gas in in the in the in the structure, and in most cases because this this is constrained by the symmetry of the crystal structure, 
I think we believe it, uh, it is imposing too, too much constraint. So we say, okay, what, what can we do? Can we go forward? Can we go uh, see this uh, in a way that we can understand what is going, what is going on with the gas molecules? So yes, we did. The, we were lucky enough to be uh, at the Radford Aperton Laboratory, and we had uh, ice and neutron facility across the road. Uh, we we were doing a similar experiment uh, in terms of the gas uh, absorption in, in this uh, CIF8 uh, metallurgy framework. In the in the near inter intermediate range of the diffractometer Nimrod at, at ISIS, which is a total neutron, neutron scattering uh, uh, diffractometer, uh, wide Q range uh, diffractometer. But that we have to deuterate, the, I have to synthesize the C8, we deuterate it. And one of the good things about the, the, this type of experiments is that they allow us. Uh, to monitor the gas loading as, as, as it's happening. So we can just, uh, uh, using the appropriate calibration, we can follow we can follow the loading and we can actually um, determine how many uh, gas molecules do we have uh, per, per, per zinc atom or per, per, per unit, per, per formal unit. That, that was good because we can do the experiment in situ and we can model that. So first we did the uh, we did the modeling of the using the primitive potential structure refinement of the empty structure just to uh, corroborate that we had the, the good model for for the empty one before we were we were including the nitrogen molecules. Uh, we could see that the, when we were doing the, the partial distribution function of the different uh, atoms, uh, as they are distributed, uh, they are um, located in the in the in the pore. So this, the, the origin would, in, in this particular case, would be the center of the of the cage. So there would be a, a, a Q atom, and kind of imaginary atom in the center of the cage, kind of a, the, the, the origin, just to just to have an origin. And in our structure, we could we could we could monitor the the different the different position of the different uh, either the, uh, the atoms of the structure or the gas molecule. So we were loading uh, first. Uh, Oxygen, so we were uh, loading a low, low pressure of oxygen. We would see that there was uh, four, four oxygen uh, molecules per formula unit, and by doing the calculation, we found that okay, so we we got a, a good agreement, especially in the first diffraction peak, which is related with the with the distribution of the of the molecules in the in the, in the cage pore, and we were monitoring the the, the position of these uh, ga uh, gas molecules in the in the in the, in the cage. We could see that there was kind of in uh, distributed in a kind of two layer absorption. Okay, so then okay, we have we have the oxygen which is distributed and, and kind of forming two layers or something when there's low 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 pressure. What happens when we when, when we change to nitrogen? When we change to nitrogen, and then we we are at low a low a low, a low pressure at, uh, having three 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 nitrogen molecules per formula unit. We do see something rather different. We do see as a, a, a fine uh, nitrogen layer uh, in the cage, uh, covering covering the cage. And when we compare both, so it's just it looks like that the in terms of the of the distribution of the oxygen and, and nitrogen atoms, the nitrogen are more well located, uh, covering the, the uh, more closely to the cage atoms. Let's say okay. What happens when we increase the when we increase the pressure? When we increase the pressure, we go across this uh, gate opening transition. The the oxygen is still uh, distributed in 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 two in two layers, but but the uh, nitrogen, by the uh, both the the nitrogen and the oxygen, they are distributed in two layers. But the case of the of the oxygen is more more complex in the sense that it's more broader. Okay, so we kind of not go into, into the center of the pore, but kind of uh, expands a little bit more. And this is, uh, uh, for example, for the case of the oxygen, what what would, what would see we change the different orientations of the crystallographic uh, view, okay? So there is kind of a more random orientation of the, even though they, 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 are, they are located in the in, in, in different layers, the, there is no, there is no, that much uh, fish absorption, or there is not a strong absorption in a particular uh, symmetric uh, constraint uh, places, which is kind of one of the things that it has been uh, shown by X-ray dif diffraction. Uh, so we found we found 
uh, that this 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 technique, so uh, total neutral scattering, is more suitable for studying uh, gas absorption in, in porous materials. So as a conclusion, so we did the exas, exas uh, measurement through, uh, across this gate opening transition. Uh, we did see the expansion of the lattice, but not the expansion of the of the signature into the hydron, which is rather quick. Rigid, okay, there is no distortion in the in the in the in the Fresnel network. The the possibility of doing high resolution sense and the combination with the sense calculation allow us to monitor more closely the changes in the in the ligand geometry, in terms of mm, being able to to this to discern what is happening at different at different pressures. And the and the experiments at the at the Nimrod uh, with this total nitro scattering allow us to monitor where this nitrogen, which we barely see with the exa because it's farther away in most cases, only in the particular case of these nitrogen atoms that we were when that is happened to be located in the in the four in the in the four uh, window in the square window four. Uh, there are, are all things that are more suitable to, to be able to monitor this uh, gas loading in the pore structure. Uh, so then in terms of uh, different gases, so different nitrogen and oxygen, even though they both uh, uh, go through the, so both uh, uh, trigger this gate opening, they behave differently in terms of the how they are loaded into the into the cage pore. So then it's something to be able to bear in mind. So the different gases will behave differently because they will interact differently with the, with the structure. And one of the things that is key in this particular case is the um, the 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 group that is in the in the in the in the in the methyl group. In, the methyl. So in this case, it's a methyl group. But if we change the, this group, um, it can. It can change the interaction with the with the with the gas, and then this gate opening will happen in, in in a different way. Not only not only interaction with not only the change of the gas molecule, the change on on the on the on of the of the uh, organic ligand will also change this uh, gate opening transition that has been reported uh, by Coder and, and, and others. Okay, so. I would like to thank all my colleagues at Diamond and, 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 and ISIS that they have been make this possible. So, um, uh, Sophia, Shu, Monica, Luke, I really thank them for for being for being there and for for being uh, through there with me because uh, I, I was lucky enough to to be to be working with them. So this 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 work has been published. So I didn't put the, the any preference. So if you, don't, you have them here in case you you are interested. So um, there are some there's some some information that you can find there if you you have you have more questions. So I would be very happy to to answer them. I thank you for your nice talk, Roberto. So now it's open to accept your questions from the audience. Any questions from audience? He can accept any question. Oh, can I ask? Okay. Okay. So yeah. thank you very much for the nice talk. So I uh, have uh, many questions. It is very, very interesting. So first of all, why nitrogen and oxygen are so different? Is there well, some chemical interaction between ZF, ZF and nitrogen and oxygen or some other? One of the things that they are, that they are... Yeah. That are affecting is the. I mean, they are. They are. I'm agree with you. The, in terms of the, mm. the, in terms of gases, they are very similar, mm. but they are not that similar in terms of because we are. We one thing that are key here is the mm. the, the the kinetic diameter of the molecule. Okay, so depending mm -hmm. on the, the the of the molecule, so it will go into the into, it will interact with the with the framework in the different in the different way. So remember mm. that we don't have like interaction with surfaces. We we don't have interaction with surfaces. But they are in, in 3D and they are um, rather small in the sense that they, you you would see the, the corners and the and the and mm -hmm. the and the the, the 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 shape of the of the cage, let's say. Okay. 
Mm. And one of the things that is changing is also the polarizability of the, of the molecule gas. Okay, if you change to more uh, polarizable uh, gas, you will see different uh, behavior, slightly different behavior. Okay, so at the end of the day, so is the is the interaction with the with the organic ligand. So we are, I'm not I'm not saying there there are, are all the materials that they have um, different breathing mechanisms. So if you load gas, so they kind of compress uh, in one direction, things like that. In this particular case, so we do see this. Uh, expansion of the lattice around one percent, and this swing of the of this of this uh, of this um, of this of this ligand, and is is the way the way the 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 gas molecules interact with the framework. I don't know if I'm answering your question. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. So, other persons uh, may ask <laughs> questions. I think so. The I, um, if not, I I ask later. Okay, so any other questions from the audience? If not, uh, Kyotak will continue to ask more questions, right? <laughs> yes, please. <laughs> oh, there it is. Uh, yeah, Angelo. Oh, go ahead. Uh, hi, uh, thank you for the very nice talk. Uh, just a clarification there's a feature in the XAPS at around uh, six angstroms, uh, which was increasing with. I think pressure or temperature. Uh, mm -hmm. What what is this? Uh, what distance does this correspond to? And structurally, uh, what is happening? Why is the intensity increasing? So it is not the more than intensity increasing. I guess I guess you you meant this uh, this change here, right? Yes. So it, it does increase uh, when we cool down. But as, as it does with the with the with the amplitude of the excess, which just uh, we are we are cooling down, so we are we are we have uh, uh, less less vibration, let's say. But the, the point here, the key the key point here is this shift. This shift is the expansion of the this this corresponds to the sink to sink distance. Okay, this uh, this distance here, sink to sink, and actually we could see this this uh, strongly. Because there is some focusing path here through the carbon, okay? It's zinc, carbon, zinc, and it's enhancing this uh, this contribution. Otherwise, it's, it's very weird to, to find. Very weird, I would say. It's it's complicated to find these contributions higher R because the, unless they are with very heavy very heavy atoms or having this focusing effect, uh, you won't you won't be able to see strong strong. Uh, Contributions in the in the Fourier transform. I don't know if I'm answering your question. Oh uh, yeah, I think it clears something up. Uh, but another point. So the merging of the two peaks at five point six and around six is due to the uh, the rot the twisting of the the structure that you mentioned earlier you you mean did, did you mean did this this uh, this here uh, or, yes or, uh, this these two peaks yeah yeah well we we did not go in that much detail because it's very difficult because the model is rather complex so um, um but then this is this is the way of uh, um uh, i would say this is this is the way the the we got it from the full and transfer. So it's just, I would not be able to answer you clearly because uh, there are several contributions. We didn't, we didn't uh, go into that much detail because the, in the end of the day, the, the, there are many contributions and the subtle changes can change this. So we were, we were a bit careful with leaving too many degrees of freedom. In the, we wanted to, I mean, there are too many contributions, too, too many multiple pattern contributions that uh, that can add to this uh, to this uh, spectra, to, to 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 fit in to fit in this spectra. So we were careful not to have too many degrees of freedom. I don't know what you mean. Uh, I get. Uh, how you 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 got me on that? So I, I would not be able to tell you this is a thing. It's just kind of sim simply the, the the way the way it kind of gets. Uh, from the from the exams uh, okay. when we do the the, the full transform. Yeah, I see. 
Thank you. <clears throat> okay. Uh, other, any other questions? <coughs> if not, Kyotaka will continue asking. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. So the, another question is, the, uh, you observe uh, nitrogen interaction in zanes and exos, right? Yes, it's, it's more clear um, yeah. in the in the same, so we monitor, mm. uh, we, mm. we have better. It is very, very interesting and surprising. So the, you calculate, I think the nitrogen and zinc interaction is constant or fixed, right? So yeah, I mean, yeah. I mean, we, we, we located, when we did that, we did it, when we did the science calculations, we located mm -hmm. the nitrogen in a fixed position. So we were not mm -hmm. uh, moving it around. Mm -hmm. so... but, the, mm -hmm. but the space is enough to move around the nitrogen, right? But it is fixed. It means some interaction between zinc or framework? I, I, don't, I don't think there is any, mm. uh, an, an interaction between the nitrogen molecule and the zinc. The interaction is the, the, with, with the mo nitrogen molecule and the framework. But this, mm. in, in this particular case, it's close enough to the zinc atom that we mm. can see the multiple scattering from, from it, okay? Because there are many mm. more, there are many more uh, nitrogen atoms that I have, yeah. not, have not shown here that, uh, uh, there are many, many, if you, if you, if you um, well, I can go, if, oh. because I don't want to change. So there are many, many more nitrogen atoms. They are far, we, we check all the contribution for different nitrogen atoms, okay? So because it means- that they, they, mm. It has been reported, the, the nitrogen position in, mm. the, in the structure, okay? We say, okay, is, is this, is this in, improving, the, improving the calculations? Uh, we check uh, from, from the reported, uh, um, Stru structures from the mm -hmm. diffraction, the different the different atoms, uh, nitrogen atoms where they were located, and um, the the one which is closer and, and, and kind of uh, improve the, the the way the way the the way this uh, this uh, this the shape the spectral shape of the of the calculation, it was this this one which is the closest one. Okay, there are there are many other uh, nitrogen atoms. So and it seems that when mm -hmm, this mm -hmm. actually this happens at high loading, so a high loading, so mm -hmm. the, the, the openness, the, 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 the this this string of this uh, organic ligand, and then it allows the, the nitrogen to to get into this location. Even though the, when we do we do we refer to the gate opening, we refer to the gate opening of this six member uh, hexagonal mm -hmm. pool. Okay. So it means the nitrogen is not like gas, but it is something like solid. So the not say solid, so it's just kind of located there, but not solid. It's kind of, it's absorbing the framework. So it, you mm -hmm. need to, it's kind of, we can, we can speak about in terms of condensation, okay? Because you get layers of, of, of nitrogen atoms that get on the, um, they get absorbed in the one, one layer, they got more. Mm -hmm. It's kind of uh, uh, mm. getting kind of condensation. I don't want to say condensation because the condensation we have we, we see kind of liquid inside, but this kind of uh, uh, this 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 picture. Okay, so it's kind of one they are uh, they, they 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 reach the maximum loading capacity, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. even though they are not uh, symmetrically uh, or distributed. Oh, yeah, in yeah, some yeah. particular mm -hmm. cases, they are they are in, the, in this particular case. I mean, I'm not saying that this is the this is the really fully accurate picture. I mean, mm. I'm, I'm, I'm sure that there, in some cases there there will be some some nitrogen atoms that will be a bit farther away from this four four window four. There will be some other that we will be. So this is kind of an average picture. Okay, we we say okay, what happened? If we locate the because it was reported before. So it's kind of uh, this this when we reach the the, the high loading. So we will see mm -hmm. the nitrogen mm -hmm. uh, occupying this this particular place because they, we got this structure fully open. And we okay. say, okay, this is the one which is closer mm -hmm. to the nitrogen, which is the one that could contribute to the to the multiple scattering. Okay, uh, I see. I see. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you very you. much. Okay. Yeah, nice talk. Thank you. Thank you. Um, any other questions? Well, one question uh, I have. Uh, the beam size is something like uh, several hundred micron at the beam line. 
right? Yes, yes, 300 so by 400. Is there any, any um, difficulties or struggle points to measure the high resolution uh, uh, spectrum by the, the uh, I mean, uh, no, the only, the only, I mean, the, the beam size uh, constrains the time, the type of, uh, the, the size of the capillary, okay? Because um, one of the things that you, 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 you need to have is that the, if you use very, very small capillaries, you will have the beam going over the capillary and it's not very nice, okay? So one of the things that the, we, this, this constraint, the, the, the way it was just, um, um, Let's say uh, the the, the 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 diameter of the of the, the capillary. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. So the, <clears throat> okay. Um. Any other questions? Uh, if not, thank you, Robert, for your very nice talk. It's very interesting. Thank you for the invitation, Hitoshi. Um, I hope people liked it. Yeah, um, yeah, I'm sure. open to questions. If anyone has uh, any other, any other question, uh, they can they can and write me, okay? Email. Thank you.